The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, welcome, everyone, and um, I, I have to, I, I said this to the 11 a.m. Mass as well. This morning, I, f I hooked a, a brother priest of mine up. Um, he asked me to celebrate Mass for the 8 a.m. Mass at his, uh, it was in Elba. Did you ever hear of Elba, E-L-B-A? Anyway, <laughs> I'm so used to this church, but this church in Elba was like right here, this section, and uh, yeah, I maybe this many people too. So anyway, it was it was really cool. But uh, I, I love you all, and uh, glad I'm here. I'd love to go to Elba, whatever God wants. But anyway, I don't know why I said that. Um, <laughs> before Deacon Dan gets into his homily, a couple of quick announcements. I think I have your attention right now, and the announcements that are read leading up to the gospel, or uh, the entrance hymn, um, people are coming in and out, uh, and I think distractions, but I want to share with you, um, this Tuesday at 7 p.m., there's a prayer service for cancer survivors, right here in the church, Tuesday at 7, Tuesday at 7, please join us if you, if you can, um, cancer survivors, prayer service, Tuesday at 7. The second announcement that I'd like to make is that um, love our Pope, Francis. He's a stud of a Pope. Uh, you know, he's a Jesuit. Can't beat it. Anyway, um, Pope Francis is consecrating our world to the Blessed Mother on this Marian day. Uh, we are having... Um, everyone, we're inviting everyone this afternoon at 5.30. If you could come back, you are more than welcome. We would love to have you back. We're going to recite the rosary, and there will be a consecration. Um, it's our way of uh, uh, being in union with Pope Francis in doing this, consecrating uh, our world to the Blessed Mother. And that's why we have the statue of Our Lady of Fatima. I don't know if you know the story about Fatima, Check it out. Google it. It is phenomenal. Um, the three children that she appeared to in Fatima. It's a great story. Early 1900s. People are still going there. Anyway, I'll shut up and sit down. Deacon Dan's going to take over the homily. And uh, thank you for being here. Good afternoon. If we have any friends or visitors here today, welcome to St. Gregory's and thank you for being among us. Carol decided that she wanted to do something nice for her neighbor, Mrs. Smith. So she baked a pie and she carried it next door. And when Mrs. Smith opened the door, she was surprised to see her there holding that pie and she replied, for me? Oh, thank you so much. You don't know how much I appreciate it. You are so thoughtful for doing this. Thank you. Because Mrs. Smith enjoyed that pie so much, Carol decided the next week she was going to bake another one. And when she took it over, Mrs. Smith opened the door 
And she said, thank you so much. You are so kind. Carol took another pie over the following week, and Mrs. Smith said, thank you. So the fourth week, she took yet another pie over, and Mrs. Smith responded, sweetie, you're a day late with this pie. <laughs> that following week, Carol baked another pie, and this time, Mrs. Smith told her, maybe you can try using just a little bit more sugar in the recipe, and don't bake it for quite so long because the crust has been a little hard lately. And you know, maybe cherry filling instead of apple would be a really nice change of pace. The next week, Carol got very busy, and she just didn't have the time to squeeze a pie into her schedule. And she passed by Mrs. Smith's house on her way hurrying to some place, and Mrs. Smith looked out the window and spotted her and noticed she didn't have a pie in her hand. So she stuck her head out the window, and she goes, Excuse me, where's my pie? It's easy to get used to our blessings. And after enjoying them for a while, we actually begin to think that we deserve these things. And this process occurs slowly over time, and many times we don't even realize it's happening. And as I was getting ready for this weekend, I, this story that I'd read in the Buffalo News a number of years ago sprang to my mind. And it was on the front page of the local section, and it took up the whole top half of the page. And it was a story about this lady who was complaining about the squalid living conditions that she was experiencing because she's on a fixed income and she didn't get a lot of public assistance to help her. And they had this big picture in there that took up almost a third of the story space. It was a picture of her in her living room. And there she was on this beautiful Bentwood rocker and right next to this Oak Entertainment Center. And on this Oak Entertainment Center sat a flat panel, one of those flat screen TVs, and it struck me because back then I didn't even know anybody that owned one of those because they were still new and they were kind of expensive at that point. And in front of that flat panel TV, there was not one but two of the state-of-the-art, top-of-the-line video gaming consoles and a DVD player. And I remember thinking to myself that that picture and that story about these squalid living conditions really don't seem to go together. And as that story sprung to my mind as I was getting ready for this weekend, it also dawned on me. It's really easy to see when somebody else is not as thankful as they should be for the blessings that they have. But it's not as easy to look at ourselves. And I started thinking, well, what blessings do I have that I've been seeming to ignore lately? And I started with the obvious ones. I have a home to go to. I'm blessed with a job that I like, well, most days. And it pays enough for my family and I to live in reasonably comfortable um, lifestyle. I have some great neighbors. Then I started thinking about what are the things that are really important in my life. I have a wife that is not just an amazing, beautiful, talented person, but she's a woman who really loves me. I have three of the most outstanding people I know that I can count among my children. I have been able to be a part of some amazing stories because of my ministry. I'm part of a beautiful fraternity of holy men, the deacons of our diocese. I am blessed to be a member of an outstanding parish faith community. I have a God that gives himself to me every time we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity, each time I gather with you. Ten or twelve years ago, I thought I was throwing myself on the sword for my boys when I volunteered to be a scout leader. But I have to tell you, I think most times I'm having as much fun as my son's. Sometimes I think maybe I'm having more fun, but don't tell them that. We'll keep that our little secret. There are millions of things in our lives, little things, that are blessings in our lives that we really should be thankful for. The sun coming up, somebody holding the door open for us, the affection we receive from one of the neighbor's dogs, the laugh of a small infant, 
the car starting when I turn the key the first time. Catching just one of the lights on Maple Avenue green. And this list goes on and on. And each of these blessings really is a gift from God. It's an opportunity for us to return, return to him like the Samaritan in today's gospel, and to tell him, thank you. We're very good at praying when we're in crisis or when we need something. But how often do we take the time to just be with him and give him a heartfelt thanks? When we see the same blessings every day, we eventually stop noticing them. When we stop noticing, we quit appreciating. When we quit appreciating, we stop thanking. And when we stop thanking, we start complaining. I need to ensure that I don't let myself drift through this path any longer. I need to spend a little time each day ensuring that my prayer life reflects the many blessings that I have received today. I know that there are times when I find myself absolutely miserable, but considering the blessings I've received that day, I should be a very happy guy. We call God our Father. And what father doesn't want his children to be happy? Look at the things that have given, been given to us by our God. Each time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray and ask him to forgive us our trespasses as we forgive the trespasses of others. Why does God ask us to pray that line? I think it's because if we let go of the bitterness and the resentment and the negative emotions that we hold bottled up inside, that release may not be a blessing we're looking for, but it is a blessing. And in addition to the gifts that we give of our talents and time, like Carol gave to her neighbor, Mrs. Smith, at the beginning of my homily, when we forgive others, those around us, that's us giving ourselves, letting ourselves be a blessing to those around us and being able to be Christ for others when we show thanks for even the little things in life, we are more aware of the blessings that we receive and see them for what they truly are, and we will be happier. May each of us see all of the blessings within our lives, recognize them for the gifts from God that they truly are, and show true thankfulness for each one of them. May you have a blessed week. Thank you, Deacon Dan. I thank God every day for the super stud deacon that he is. <laughs> um, please stand. With our cue cards in the pews, I still haven't memorized the translation of our creed. Maybe you haven't either. The Apostles' Creed, top left corner. As a people of faith, we now profess what we believe.